Hello and welcome to another episode of Javelin Journeys. And um, I'd like to say sorry because I don't do these videos as often as I would like to. Just like you, I struggle to find the time to do my own content marketing. Even though I know the importance and how to do it easily, for me, it's still hard to get time to prioritize it. And that's the same problem I see lots of campaign, lots of digital markets have the same sort of problems is that we always prioritize client work first. What pays the bills is important to us. Everything else, very hard to put that focus on it, even though we know that it's super important to get that done and that it has impacts like nothing else. You know, if I, if I think around, um, some of the stats that I've seen of, of recent, you know, there's, there's been a big update in, in stats, but this year now it's, we're over halfway through the year, people more than ever want to see more online video content. In fact, with, there was a survey done by Wise Owl this year. Um, and in 2018, the same group of people said 85% of their audience of consumers wanted to see more online video content from brands. In 2023, that is now an industry leading 91%. That's how important online video is for people. Uh, the latest figures show that, um, you know, 86% of marketers even use content marketing and video specifically as a, as a, as a main tool for what they're doing. Um, and the majority of them, 78% of those people said that that's helped them increase sales or at the very least, um, you know, a, a larger majority than that saw that it drew a lot more traffic to their website. Um, and lastly, you know, um, Around two thirds of consumers have said that, uh, they much prefer short form videos, short form videos. What's that? So this is one of the things that I wanted to talk about today is as a business owner, I understand your challenges directly or finding the time to be able to create content. I understand that it's hard to put in place a long-term plan. When the worry is about feeding people today, it's, I get that hundred percent. Um, and also creating that content in a way that it doesn't become distracting from your main job. I know that in most small businesses, um, you've got maybe five or 10 people if you're lucky. And I know that even when you hit the 10 people mark, you still don't have a marketing team. You're still focused on creating a website and regular marketing materials. Getting after that social element, it becomes so much harder still, even as you grow, because there's so many more pressures on budget to go elsewhere and that budget's still finite. I totally understand that. So what I, what I set Javelin up to do is two things. Like, first of all, I'm an educator in the space. So I want to help business owners, CEOs, founders, managing directors, whoever, to do more with the budget and resource and time that they have. So I really share all of my advice, all of my tips and tricks, everything that I do within the business, I put it out here on LinkedIn. Hopefully, you know, hopefully you will receive some of that content and, and you really enjoy that. Uh, I'd love to hear, you know, I always open to feedback and, and, and thoughts on things that we have done, um, as well as ideas for things that we could do in the future. But as a business owner myself, I struggle with the same problems that you do. And so Javelin is also from a, from a business perspective, it's about us taking that, um, workload from your shoulders and saying, don't worry about it. It's okay. We can do that for you. Um, content marketing on its own, be around for a number of years now, and I've seen it dramatically flop. So it's content marketing on its own just isn't enough anymore. There's a lot of noise in the industry. Everybody's posting, or it can at least be perceived that way. What you've got to do is break through that noise. You've got to disrupt the pattern of the people that are your ideal clients. You've got to set yourself apart. You've got to be different. And that's really hard to do. It's really hard to do. People are telling you it's easy and it can be more often than not. That is really hard to hit that right note without putting big clown shoes on and looking ridiculous. Cause that's the other alternative is you just become a comedy, you know, and some businesses can carry that off. Some businesses, you know, I've seen sales loft, sales loft, um, 
Tom does that really well at Sales Loft. Um, the business isn't seen as a joke, but everything that he posts out is humor, not funny. So, I have a laugh about this with, with our team. It's like, you know, if a con client wants us to do funny stuff, don't bring them to me. I'm like, I'm happy to help with the strategy and, and how to build that content out. But I'm not a funny guy. Or, you know, I'm, I'm one of those guys that thinks dad jokes are funny. Right? That, that's, that's my sort of level of humor. And, and most business owners just don't have that credible sense of humor either. So how do we set apart a business and make them different in a crowded space, in a new space? What, what's the, what the track then? So what I often say to people is, first of all, before you get involved in creating videos and understanding how you can create more content, what you've really got to do, and this is crucial, is understand your clients, not from your side of the desk, from their side of the desk, get your head in their space. And I've shared already some good sort of chat GPT prompts that you can use to pop in there and it'll come up with things like what are their favorite TV shows and where do they spend their time? What sorts of activity do they take part in these people that are your ideal clients? And whilst I'm not recommending sending them an email and saying, Oh, hey, Jim, uh, you know, you've probably been to the cinema this weekend to see, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy. I saw it last week. Like that. Right. Let's set something right here in outreach and in messaging. Personalization is overrated. If I see something personalized comes into my email, unless it's 100% genuine and that person has something that really speaks to me and they can talk to that back and even then. I kind of overshadow it with a bit of doubt when I don't know that person, what does work? Well, let's think about things. So, you know, a lot of salespeople and a lot of businesses will therefore go out and blanket email people. And what works really badly with that is you send out one pain point and assume that everybody feel that pain point the same. Realistically though, the marketing team, the sales team, the senior the directors, they've all got very different set of challenges that they have. And whilst they might be aware that somebody else has the challenge that you're talking about, they don't feel that pain themselves because they're not targeted on them. What I always say to people is think about what your ideal clients will talk about when they're mourning to their partner over a meal at supper time. Because that's the sort of things that you need to target in your messaging in your content and your videos. So, well, you know, for me, if I'm targeting somebody who's in charge of finance about a product, I'm trying to think when they sat down with their partner at the table on the night and the kids are sat there and everybody's sat around having a meal and this guy, this girl, this lady stressed, they can't, can't eat the food because they're so fed up because their boss has been giving them a hard time about a specific metric something that they're in charge of delivering on behalf of the business. And they just can't see a way of delivering that metric without compromising things, without breaking things. And they think that they're doing a really good, you know, they're trying really hard with it. They've, you know, they've been thinking outside the box, but all sorts of plans in place. It's just still not delivering what's needed. That's the thing that you need to capitalize on. Even if it's not the biggest pain point that you solve for that person, it's the most relevant pain point for that person. And that's where we need to go with the messaging. So when we're creating videos, when we're creating content, we're creating posts, we need to be talking to those pain points. The other thing that a lot of businesses do is, and I've been guilty of this, is trying to foil the option. Or oh, well, our clients are this person, this person, this person, this role, this role, this role. All of these industries, we can do all of these things, we can solve all of these problems. That's great. But if I'm at a networking event and I tell people what I do, I don't tell people what I do around the edges of my business. I don't tell them that we do general marketing. I don't tell them that we do websites and SEO and paid media. We can do all of those things, but I don't talk about it because I want my audience and my ideal clients to remember one thing about me and that's interview based video content that's what I specialize in that sets us apart 
I've never seen so far, and correct me if I'm wrong, and I'd love to meet these people because the big old space and I'd see them as partners rather than competitors. I've not seen any of the marketers aiming at that angle. So I think that's really important for me to hone in on. That's what will set me apart in people's minds. And if you tell people two or more things that you do, will remember nothing because you'll just blur into nothingness, right? They'll not be able to remember three things about you. You know, you're just one small part of the day. Yet to you, you're the most important person in that room. Stay there, keep that thought. But to that other person, you're not. You're just a person they've met. What you want is to create a connection so that when they go home and they're feeling their problems, they will come back to you and their brain will connect with you and they'll reach out. Same with content, same with videos. Scroll in their newsfeed, adverts, adverts, jobs, people getting new jobs, people losing jobs, looking for jobs, people celebrating awards, people having big to meetings, networking, great, brilliant. All that's just blah, it's just sand in the feed. What they're looking for are things that are going to make them stop. Stop scrolling that feed. Look at this, have an emotional attachment and be interested in what, what else is to be said in that message. And if you're trying to boil the ocean, you can't do that. It's almost impossible, right? Businesses that are across multiple industries and are across multiple job roles, always start out with one industry, maybe two, but usually just one and two or three job roles that they focus on within that. Get that to bed, nail it, bring those customers in, then move to the next industry or move to the next set of job roles, move to the next set of pain points. Make that second industry or that second market, whatever it is that it looks like for you, it's got to have some relevance to the first one because you're going to use those first clients as social proof that you can do the second market. And that's the way to start moving it around is start somewhere, somewhere where you've got you know, you've got some good background in, you've got experience in it. You've maybe already got a client in that space. Brilliant. Nail it. And all your messaging should be about that until you've absorbed as much from that market as you need to, to be able to confidently move into another one. So that's the other thing that I wanted to kind of raise to the people today is around that idea that you need to be very focused about your messaging. You need to be very clear about what you're trying to do. And the important thing that sits on top of all of that is everybody tries to do that and run down your throat how they solve your problems. Now, there's two schools of thought here is one, you should never, ever mention your business and your services. Crap. Like from my perspective, I disagree completely. You might not, that's, that's separates us. And here's where we go on it is if people don't know what I do, how can they ever come to me when the time is right? You've got to be able to understand from someone's content, from their website, from their posts, from their videos, whatever, how they impact on the challenges that you have. When would be the right time to come to that person? How much are their costs in a ballpark figure at least? And how do they solve the problems that you have? But that doesn't mean you have to ram it down their throat every week, every post, every message. So there's a balance to be had. And what I always say to people is my preference is to tell people how to do what I do without advertising myself at all or my business until the very last moment. So I tell them, give them all the routes that they can use to solve their challenges. And then at the very end, the last step, if you've tried all of these and they haven't worked, if you don't like any of these and you want to know what else there is, or you know, if you look at that and you just think there is no way on earth I'm going to do any of that, realistically, I'm not going to do that because we'd already be doing it if that was the case. Those being the case, then come to me. And that's the way we approach the messaging is sometimes don't mention javelin at all. Quite often don't. Sometimes it's just about my viewpoints, my opinions, and some thoughts on a particular subject. But I very, very rarely do post that is just purely about javelin and what we do and why we do the way we do it. It's always about challenges that I perceive in the industry and the problems that I see. 
Something else I wanted to touch on today was um, the long game. So I'll mention it right back at the beginning of the, of the talk. The, the long game for many is really hard to get involved in. Even if we know that social media is super important, the vast majority of business owners are focused on today, tomorrow, next week, this month. It's really, really hard to take proactive steps on something that might not pay off for six, nine, 12 months. Having come from a business where I managed to do that consistently, I can tell you that the results are transformative. So that 12 month mark onwards, it really does ramp up to a considerable level. It's consistent. People understand the brand and know who you are. And you become very much a public face after that point, but it's really hard to get there. And, you know, I see a lot of CEOs firing out a thousand emails a week on marketing campaigns and get no replies on their emails. And my advice to them is just kind of take a step back, take a step back. I know you want to be hitting your sales. I know you want to be delivering results now, but if you never take the time to do it properly and build into something long-term, you will always be stuck in this trap that you're in right now of trying to deliver results from nothing. Far better to shrink what you're trying to do into a really focused few steps, do them really well, deliver them consistently and move on to the next thing the next month. Don't get stuck in that rut of doing short-term stuff all the time to try and get the results. The short-term tactics, strategies, and plans don't feed you in the long-term. They're not consistent. They're not repeatable and they're not scalable. So focus on what's scalable. We all want to get investment at some point, right? Like that's where most businesses are that I speak to. They want to get investment. They want to exit in five years, all those sorts of great things. Brilliant. But to get there, you need to be able to demonstrate that your business sales generation, your revenue generation, your inbound leads, they're all repeatable, consistent business that doesn't revolve around you as a CEO or as a senior leader. So if your business is doing well right now, but it's only doing well because of your connections and your relationships, you're going to struggle. You might not be feeling that pain yet. And that's prime time to be starting to think about the long-term game. You've built up some momentum. You've maybe broken through the atmosphere. At the very least you're in orbit, right? You need to think about how, when that fuel gets cut off and it will, eventually your network will run out, your founders results will run out, or they just won't be enough to take it to the next level. You need to put the building blocks in place now so that your audience and your ideal clients know who you are, like you and trust you before they can come to you. They understand what it is that you do, how you solve their problems. And that all takes time. You know, I've said this many times now. People come to me and they ask about, you know, whether I can deliver re results in three, three months. It's unlikely. If I do deliver results within three months, it's because we've been, you know, fortunate enough that by being consistent and being out there so much, we have found some people who are willing to be early adopters and take a bit of a risk. They're not the ideal clients that you're aiming for in the longer run. And they're a bit of a risk to you in the business. So always consider whether you've got both things in place um, and putting a few text posts out, resharing your company post is not building a brand presence online. It's not going to deliver for you in the long run. What's far more important for you as a business owner or as a senior leader in a business is utilizing your own personal brand to build something on behalf of the business. And people will begin to associate you with your business and bring the two together. Very hard to create an emotional attachment with a business directly. People can emotionally attach to another human being very easily. And that's why video is the key tactic. Use video, help people understand where you can help them, why you can help them, how you can help them and how much it's going to cost them. Do that and attach yourself to that brand at some point. You can peel that personal brand away from the main business brand when you've, when you've hit that growth and that, that business brand will carry on 
and you could go and do something up with your personal brand. But that personal brand is far more important to you right now than any business brand. The amount of businesses I've seen that are successful that have nothing to do with their business page. They don't even have a business page on LinkedIn or anywhere because it's personal brand that they represent that drives all the business. Like I said, there's a danger in that, in that's not scalable. And that's why I use video content like this interview based where I'm the leader of the business, the owner of the business. I can use this content, provide that to my team and let them post that out for what, and they will become associated with me in turn. So their network will start to see me. They will then build trust with me, but they'll also start to build some that credibility for that salesperson. As, as a business leader, I have as little time as possible involved in creating content for the business. You should too. It's not about spending four, five, 10, 15 hours a week creating content for your business, unless it's really, really wrapped up and working already. It's about spending as little time as possible creating content having efficient workflows, the right tools in place and the right knowledge within your team or externally to transform that small amount of time into as much content as possible across all of your channels and magnify in that process. Make it a, make it a, you know, a big project across the team, but nobody spends any more time on it than they have to. I turned what was a 20 hour a week pro process to take video content, turn it into clips, turn it into lots of different formats, get it out on LinkedIn, cross three, four, five different accounts, write in all the posts. I turned that into four or five hours a week. You can do that too, if you're prepared to put time in and learn. So that would be my advice for this week. Um, that's, this is the end of this week's Javelin Journeys. Um, we've got, got baby due in, in two or three weeks. You might see me go really quiet on LinkedIn. Um, I am still about, we'll still be working, um, self-employed business owner and all that, but, um, good luck with your journey, with your content. And if you're on that journey, I'd love to hear from you and hear how you're doing, what's working for you and what's not. We want to share some advice. We want to get some tips. If you've got any ideas as to what content we can create next, that will help you accelerate what you're doing. I'd love to share that content. I will know how to do what you want to do. And I just want to get that value out there so that you can accelerate what you're doing. Only request from the back of this video is if you see this and you've enjoyed it, find two other people in your network, send it to them and ask them to watch it on your behalf. I would love to be able to get this out to more people. I can only do that with your help and support. All right. This has been Javelin Journeys. I'm Paul. Thanks for LinkedIn. <laughs> Thanks and bye-bye.